Walter Horton convinced Kennemeyer that an all-wing or delta-wing design would win the America bomber race. Encouraged by the proposal, Kennemeyer provided the brothers with empty government buildings on the edge of Göttingen in central Germany. It was here that Reimer Horton went to work on his first military aircraft, a twin turbojet delta-wing fighter. The creation of the fighter plane was an evolutionary development leading toward the development of the America bomber, which was to be powered by six turbine engines. And the reason that the Horton brothers felt this aircraft would be able to reach the United States was that the flying wing as a design had no fuselage or tail assembly. This made it roughly 20 to 30 percent more efficient. And if they could design an airframe that held enough fuel, they felt that they'd be able to reach the United States, successfully bomb either New York or Washington. In a field just a stone's throw from the Horton Brothers' headquarters, Ronald Schmidt flies a radio-controlled model of a delta-wing Horton fighter. First I heard about the Hortons was um, I saw a photo of the Horton 5 and I asked what is it, a kind of plane, it's, uh, it looks very modern. And my dad told me this is uh, 50 years ago. <laughs> my grandpa was working with the Horton Brothers here in Göttingen. You asked me about uh, what um, the Hortons uh, thought about war and, and stuff like that. I think they only used the military thing to, uh, uh, to construct their own planes and to flying planes. The Horton brothers felt that their all-wing design was much more efficient than other planes being used at the time. Because it had no tail, the all-wing design had less drag and that meant it could fly further with less fuel consumption than conventional aircraft. Kenemeyer was convinced that the Horton Delta Wing concept was right for the America bomber project and issued the order for work to proceed on an enlarged version of the H-09 fighter. Horton's new bomber was called the H-0118. The aircraft to be made out of wood instead of radar reflecting metal was a Delta Wing 132 feet wide, had six jet engines and was capable of flying at 600 miles per hour. Even today, the images of this design mirror the most advanced aircraft technology of the 21st century. As the three competitors worked independently on their dream machines, the war was going badly for Germany. In 1943, more than 100,000 German soldiers died in the Russian winter as Hitler's Sixth Army had finally surrendered at Stalingrad. Hitler's need for vengeance weapons had never been greater. Werner von Braun, the Horton brothers and Eugen Zenger were now in a race against the clock, against each other and against an ever-growing Allied bombing campaign. At that time Germany was really in a desperate position because the war was nearing an end, a strategic bombing philosophy was very effective. It was taking out ball bearing plants, synthetic fuel plants, railroad marshalling yards, and just completely interdicting the Germans' capability to conduct war. So the resources that the Horton brothers needed were becoming increasingly diminished. They, they just couldn't get what they needed. They couldn't get aluminum, so they were building their airplanes out of wood. They were having difficulty getting engines because the Germans couldn't produce turbine engines because of the lack of high temperature alloys to put into the turbine blades. And so it was harder and harder to make war and to build these aircraft. But despite the shortage of resources, work continued. Von Braun, buoyed by the success of his V-2 rockets, began to refine plans for his transatlantic bomber. Werner von Braun had a very simple uh, plan. He was going to take one of his V-2 rockets. 
he was going to take out the warhead and put a human in there, a pilot. In order to get the range, Von Braun was going to create a booster rocket called the A-10. With 200,000 pounds of thrust. That would lift the V-2 off the launch pad with the pilot in there, take it up about 40 miles, and that way Von Braun could reach New York City 3,500 miles away. Werner von Braun's uh, plan to bomb New York City would have been a virtually a kamikaze flight. And Werner von Braun didn't care. Anyway, the pilot would never have survived a bailout of, of that A-9 rocket because it would be coming in to New York City approaching 3,000 miles per hour. There was no way anyone could get out of that rocket plane. Unbeknown to Braun, the future of his rocket was in jeopardy. British reconnaissance had identified the location of the rocket city at Pinamunda, and encrypted messages and launch activities at the base were being closely monitored. Uh, we knew about the developments in Pinamunda, both by aerial photography, which probably was ordered as a result of our intercepting message traffic about what was going on there. Then the Allies decided to act. On the night of the 17th of August 1943, the Royal Air Force amassed 500 heavy bombers and attacked Pinamunda. Their mission was not simply to destroy the base, but to kill the scientists and key people working on Hitler's vengeance weapons. The raid was launched in complete secrecy. Even the true nature of the target was not revealed to the bomber crews. The raid crippled Pinamunda and killed a total of 735 people, including many scientists, and von Braun's A4 project was set back by several critical months. The raid also prompted the Germans to shift some of their experimental activities to an SS artillery range near the village of Blitzna in Poland, well beyond the range of Allied bombers. The Allied discovery of the Pinamunda uh, rocket development site and their decision to, to bomb it with great accuracy was a, was a very, very important development. It didn't stop work entirely, but it uh, destroyed a great many facilities and, and it forced...